Uh, I'd like to first acknowledge uh, the Spurs. I mean, obviously, it was a, a difficult uh, series from them uh, injury-wise and circumstantially. So uh, <laughs> they're a class organization. They've been doing it year after year after year for seems like decades. Um, and, you know, it's unfortunate how it went down for them, but uh, they're definitely an organization that will bounce back. Um, I'm sure of it. They've done it many times before. Uh, our guys, you know, i got to give them credit, too. Uh, they, they've been phenomenal so far in, in our postseason run. Um, they've tried to do everything that we've asked them to do, tried to stay focused, tried to, tried to stay locked in defensively. And, uh, and it's, it's paid off in our wins and, and most of our performances. Uh, you, know, you look down at the box score, and KD had a heck of a game you know, scoring. He was very efficient with his 29 points. He had 12 rebounds for us. But I thought tonight he was great defensively. Um, <clears throat> very few uh, breakdowns on the defensive end uh, on, his, on his part. Uh, he was locked in, he followed the game plan, and I thought he was spectacular uh, for us on that end of the floor. Steph, you know, he was Steph. You know, he scored the ball, he shot the ball well for us, and he got us going. He helped get us going when when they go on a run. It seemed like uh, KD or Steph more often than not would hit a big three to keep the separation uh, at hand. You know. Our guys continually share the basketball with the 30 assists. At the end of the day, it's, it's a good win for us, and it's hard. I don't care who you're playing. Uh, to, to make it to the NBA Finals, to win your conference finals, it's a, it's a big task. It's a huge accomplishment, and I tip my hat off to all of our players. Our coaching staff was phenomenal, uh, management and ownership. And then all of our fans back in back in the Bay Area. Sam Amick, USA Today. Mike, you spent a lot of time around Manu, and certainly he could be retiring. Um, how do you see his legacy? And for you personally, just what kind of memories come to mind as far as who he is and, and the way he competed? Wow, I, you know, I've been in this thing since 1992, and just as a person, he's one of the all-time greatest that I've come across. You know, I don't know if there are many people better than him uh, as individuals. Uh, it's a sad day. Uh, it's also a joyful day because he's brought a lot, not only to the Spurs organization, Sam, I mean, to basketball all around the world. I mean, he's brought a lot of joy for a lot of people for many years. And, you know, yeah, he's going to be remembered for the for the titles and – you know, the scoring and all that other stuff. But you talk about a guy that's as talented as, as he is, could have done anything in the NBA for many years. He was humble enough to be one of the first to accept coming off the bench graciously. That speaks volumes. And in my opinion, it's helped set a trend going forward because I know I have used it. I'm sure other coaches have used it. <laughs> but you can always look back and say, hey, remember that guy named Manu Ginobili? He graciously did it, and they won umpteen titles because of it. That just embodies who that guy is from, from day one. First row, you guys have had three closeout games, and in each time, you guys have really taken control of the game right away. You didn't leave anything to chance. You seemed to play with a lot of aggressiveness. There was no let up. What does that focus say about your team? You know, again, <clears throat> in my opinion, it starts with Steve Kerr. He's our head coach. He's our leader. He's been saying it from day one, lock in defensively and keep it simple offensively. And we had a couple breakdowns defensively. We turned the ball over a couple of times on the offense end of the floor. But uh, our veteran leaders, you know, they tried to right the ship early. And uh, it showed as time went on and we were able to create some separation. So I give credit to Steve and all the guys in the locker room for 
locking in defensively and keeping it simple offensively. Does a start to a closeout game like that, when it happens now consistently in one playoff year, say anything about? Say it again. When you have three three starts like that each time in a closeout game, does that say anything about the makeup and the approach of this team? Uh, it, it does, and, and <clears throat> that's why, again, even though Steve was not on the sidelines tonight, that's why I give him credit because he's laid such a terrific foundation with this group, and he's given them ownership. I've been saying it the whole series. I've been saying it the whole playoff run, and, and our guys have handled it the right way. And they know what, a lot of times they know before we do what they need to do in order to right the ship if they're not playing the correct way. So give credit to Steve, give credit to that group for coming out and trying to close the game right, the right way tonight. Mike, back to Manu for a moment. When the crowd was chanting Manu, Manu, and all the emotions were flying around the gym, did it seem like you were part of a historical moment? As crazy as it sounds, yes. You know, um, you know I, I, I know that I, I'm looking forward to the day to tell my grandkids I was there for his last game. You know, a lot of great players and great people have come through this organization. I feel that way about Manu. I feel that way about Tim. You know, Tony one day, David Robinson. <laughs> it was just not only great players, but great people. And to hear the crowd serenade him like that was fun. And I was glad that I was here for it. Guys, we're going to take two more. Coach, uh, Luis Ortiz, Telemundo, San Antonio. Given the injuries to the Spurs and, and your relationship with Coach Pop, how do you feel or how much sympathy do you have? Kind of, Although you have to compete and you know you have to come out and win, but for him and, and what do you tell him after the game? No, you know, really, I, I let him talk to me. You know, I just responded, you know. He's been here, done it many times, and he's about as gracious to me and my family as anybody has been through my entire life. And so I just listened to him. But, yeah, it, it was tough for those guys. But uh, he said it before the series even started. You know, he called, we talked, we laughed. He said, hey, I love you. I told him I love, loved him. And. He said, but you know, once this starts, we're going to try to kick your ass. <laughs> I said, okay, it's on then. <laughs> so, you know, the injuries happen. It's part of the game. But at the end of the day, they still wanted to win, and we did too. Mike, uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman, as dominant as y'all have been in the postseason, do you worry about any type of lack of edge in close games when things are right down to the wire? Well, we, we feel like – you know, the score is kind of misleading because we feel like we can play better. Uh, there, are, there are things on both in, both sides of the ball that we can clean up, and you know, and, and that's what's, I guess, that's what's got our guys' attention or our focus because you know we've been preaching certain things, and for the most part they've been doing it, but we've had lapses to where they've been big enough to, to our guys know that in order to, you know get to our ultimate goal of winning the whole thing, we got to be better on both ends of the floor. So our guys are aware. Uh, we feel like if, if anybody uh, or if there's any game that's close down the stretch, we have enough talent uh, to win it on both ends of the floor. And our execution will help pay off if, if we're ever put in that position. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.